What is going on guys? A big welcome to you all to our channel. We are Team Crushing the Meta. You're here with D-Boy and we are back with another Spike Brother video in premium for all the Spike Brother decks that you could build after the 2020 reveals from the premium collection. If you are new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like the videos and let us know in the comment section below if you are a Spike Brother fan, which is your favorite Spike Brother deck of all time. Then, before we jump into the content of this video, I really need to tell you guys, if you haven't heard my thoughts on the strike for Spike Brothers or on all the credit mentors, everything we got from 2020 on the crit, then you should definitely check the video. It will be the link in the description section below. Warning, that video is very long. So if you're watching that, definitely watch the start where I said, get something to drink and to eat. Otherwise, <laughs> you will not survive the video. This video is also long as video. I'll try to keep it shorter than the other one, but there is so much to talk about. So when it comes to Spike Brother in premium, there are, in my opinion, as I said in the previous video, three decks that you could build. You have the Rising deck, you have the Turbo GV8 deck, and you have the Aggro deck. Let's say that the Rising deck still needs Rising, right? If you don't have Rising, then the deck pretty much would not work as effective as it should be. Problem is, Rising doesn't have a marker, which makes him a little bit hard to use when it comes to premium now because you cannot rely on cards like Prograder. Although you have your multi attackers, you have your soul chargers, you cannot use everything to its full potential because you don't have a marker, especially with the upcoming new stride, which is Formios, and he is really good. The stride from the premium collection 2020 problem, he costs soul, and you pretty much need the marker, right? Costing soul is good because this deck soul charges enough but you don't have a marker. So I tried to build this deck, but the deck became very inconsistent because you need to ride first a grade three that gives you marker and then go back to rising. So you're trying to do too much and the deck would not function. So I will have to wait until we get E rising with a marker for this deck to be as effective as I want it to be. So in this video, I will not talk about this too much. We're not talking about the uses of force two in this deck because it's crazy. We will just talk about the other decks that you could create. All right, the first deck that we have on the screen is the first deck that I've tested, which is the aggro deck. This is a deck that I will do with deck profile, I already did that, so it will be uploaded tomorrow maybe. I will show you how this deck, um, another long ass video, <laughs> because it's followed up by a combo video as well, but it's a double video. First part of the video is a deck profile and the second part is a combo video. So how does this deck work? Well, pretty much you're focusing on your good end, bad end combo. And after that, when you, you get to your uh, second stride, you will be able to get to use your new stride because you have enough soul. And when you go first, you could also go force two and then you go Agrius. And after that, you could also again, go back to your new stride. So the deck could also go to Dust, the deck could also, of course, turbo to the GB8. And as you can see, the deck doesn't really play any vanilla mechanic. No Zaza, no Tempest, no Vanillas. Why? Because, well, I tested the deck with that, and the deck is no better. This deck is better because it has combo pieces. And if you are playing Vanillas, then you need to sacrifice a lot of the right combo pieces to play those Vanillas. So you could argue with me on the Vanillas having more power and reaching faster GB, but this is not what this deck is uh, made to do. So in my opinion, after me playtesting and putting a lot of hours and effort into it, this is the perfect um, deck list that I've come up with. And again, if you want me to go to zoom in a little bit more on the deck, then I will do that in the deck profile, of course. So. I will go through the deck a little bit faster this time. So for the grade three lineup, you play, of course, your bad and dragger, you play your bull spike, you play your rising star. Those are important in the combo that you do with good end. When you go to the grade two lineup, you pretty much have your beat stick, which is bracky. You have the Lee Mason for the early game pressure and the late game pressure with the new strike because hit doesn't hit, you activate the skill. And you also have Rinaldo, Gyro Slinger for the extra soul charge and the call and going through your deck to get to those uh, Mega Instructors because you need Instructor and you need Analyzer to make the full combo work, right? 
Then you get the perfect guard, which is this time we play the beautiful SP uh, <laughs> uh, Alma. She is an amazing perfect guard, especially to have in this deck because she gives you counter charge. And counter charge is something that you actually do really need uh, when it comes to this deck. We still play three copies of the Stride Folder, although we also play the Stride Folder crits because Stride Folder also searches you rising, and in this deck, you want to ride into multiple gray threes as long as you have those Stride Folders or those crits to discard. So that's very important to Death Flag to combo very well with the early game pressure that you put with Mason to get you to that Bad End Dragger because Bad End Dragger is an important combo piece, an important card to ride into, especially if you want to go to Good End which is still your main combo in this deck. For the trigger lineup, we play uh, the six crits, being four of the uh, new premium collection crit, which you could discard to stride with, and then we play uh, the other two crits being two silent jokers. The old one, this is an important card to have in this deck because it could go to soul to counter charge, something that was uh, pointed out to me by Luke, show that to him. For the heals, of course, we play two on two. It's up to you to change that into whatever formula you love more. But for me, two on two were perfect. Uh, we play five stands, one of them being the Devil Watch. Mega Analyzer is an important card to have in this deck and Mega Instructor as well. So you need to play Instructor at four and you add in the Devil Watch because he works very good with the new stride to give you Soul Charge and Counter Charge. But all in all, having him on the field, recall him with Agrius or Calling him from hand always will work to give you that extra soul charge and counter charge. Also, what's fine about the Devil Watch right here is that um, not only that when you put him on the field, you could recharge him, but you could also have more stands in your deck. So now you have five stands, which means in the early game, you could sometimes like focus more on attacking first with a rare guard because you have more chance of getting a stand trigger. Playing only one lonely draw. I didn't really feel it was necessary to play more crits or more stands or more whatever. So I wanted to add in one extra trigger and the draw trigger actually came in handy. I felt that I didn't really need uh, to take out any other great one to put anything else in there. So I kept it like this. When we talk about the G-Zone, we play four copies of Agrius. I feel that Agrius will be a very important card in the upcoming format, but also in this deck because you have a lot of recall abilities and sometimes you want to go force 2 and with force 2 your bad and dragger would not work and until you get to your new stride until he will becomes very effective that your opponents on 4 or 5 damage then agrius will be your best option to go to especially with force 2 and if you're already creating a strong column then we have of course the two copies of good end i know that some people would say one is more than enough I still feel two is necessary because sometimes even me, I get the, the opportunity to go into a multiple one, especially if on the first turn you don't want to commit. Although in this deck, I don't really see that happening because you also have your new stride and your Agrius. Still, I feel for now for testing the two good end is good and you don't really need something else to put in the deck. You don't need a second copy of your uh, Violence Ace of the new stride from the 2020 or anything else. The only card that I could see plays is of course Dirty Piccaro, but he has a very heavy cost, which is a counter blast of two, but I could see that card being played. So maybe cut one good end to add in a Piccaro, right? But again, if you want to go too much into the thoughts of the deck, then you should definitely check the deck profile out. And uh, all in all, what I wanted to say when it comes to this deck is me testing the vanilla deck out, putting the vanillas into this deck, but the deck didn't really become better, it actually became worse, it becomes slower, and you didn't have the right combo pieces to get to your combos, right? So that's why I ended up playing it this way, just spike with the style. Alright, the next deck we have right here is the Turbo Dragger. This is the deck that actually I played for a very long time, and now I could upgrade it with the new with the new cards so this deck pretty much plays the bad and dragger as your main grade three to ride into to get into a marker also when you ride on top of it you get the opportunity to retire a column which means you could get rid of cards like only and then you have of course the uh, jelly beans the jelly beans will be able to get you the heals to your hand which means you get turbo and now i play two gun wolf gun wolf is very important in this deck, especially because you play three wonder boy and 
3 Ted. And Ted and Wonder Boy were very good with cards that put them back to the deck, of course, because you have the multi attacking again. So that's why Gun Wolf is really, really good. Then we talk about the Grade 2 lineup. Of course, you play four copies of Girl and you play the four copies of Spike Bouncer. Both of them are good to when you get into your GBA deck, and even, I mean, GBA turn, but even before that, the Spike Bouncer is a card that gives you a lot of advantage because it could have used those counter blasts to get you more cards on the field or more cards to, to, to draw. And then we get to the Dudley Mason. Dudley Mason with the Death Flag. Dudley Mason is a card that you can search with Jelly Beans. I think Spike with the players already know what this card is capable of. The hit pressure in the early game is also nice. And I play only one Mayhem Tiger because you could always loop him. It's a Joker in here. I could take him out to play something else. But I love the Mayhem Tiger. But you could also take him out to play Devil Dome. Which hits higher numbers if needed. For the grade 1 lineup, I ended up playing 4 tiers because I have enough space in my grade 1 lineup and playing only 1 only. Uh, it's up to you to play which 5 grade elementals you want, you could also take 1 tier out to play something else. I find the 4 tier really good, especially riding into the tier is good because that would mean that in the late game, uh, I mean in the early game you do not really have to give them counter blasts, in the late game you get more counter chargers. And because now you focus a lot on your spike bouncer because you have more Wonder Boy and more Ted to put that spike bouncer back to your deck, you could pretty much create an amazing GBA turn because you have more great ones that you could play. So that's why we play the six cards being three Wonder Boy and three Ted. When we get to the trigger lineup, the only thing that has changed is actually having the Strife Holder crit. And because of her, we have no more space in our grade 1 lineup. You could argue with me on getting to add in one or two strife holders in the grade 1 lineup. You could do that, pretty much up to you uh, to change the grade 1 lineup the way that you want it. Because the, in the grade 1 lineup is where you have the most flexibility. Uh, two starters, of course, because they could search your heals, right? So when we get to the G zone, uh, you pretty much would have the GB8 which is your main uh, strike to go into and he's also your kill strike. And then we have of course our new stride and good end being at 1. And the important thing about the new stride is, is that sometimes he does give you the opportunity to get to the GB8, but in this deck he is kind of the stride that will act after you go to the GB8. So if you went GB8 you didn't finish your opponent off, the stride you go after that is pretty much your new stride. Why? because you have enough soul and your opponent is already on high damage. So that's good and you have enough force markers to work with. So that's very important. Um, of course, Mirror Violence Ace, uh, Formido are important as a first stride, but it could also like Formido could retire, which is good. It could give you free stride, always good. And Violence Ace is a very important card in this deck because he trolls you and he flips those Crane Elemental. You don't have Counter Blast, Mirandol is the option. Still play the one Sea Breeze, pretty much he's just a flip target, but you could take him out to play any other Crane Elemental if you want to. And for the G Guardians, we do play the full 7 G Guardians because this is a deck that could go GB8 as a first stride as long as you have those four heals in hand. All right. That's enough about this deck. Again, I will do a deck profile on this deck to show you the funnel, that, that final build, let's say. This deck doesn't play any uh, Zazan or the Vanilla Craze. Although that you guys would say, hey, that's a very good strategy to put into Spike Brothers, agreed. Which I will show you this build. There are two builds that I build with the Vanillas and they are a hell of fun. They are also very strong, but I don't feel that they are better than the, the build that we already had. Why? Because if you play this deck, the deck is pretty much very inconsistent. Why is it inconsistent? Because you don't have a lot of vanillas to play. So the vanillas you could add to the deck will make the deck inconsistent, but also you're sacrificing combo pieces. So when you see the great one lineup, having vanilla boy, which is the old wonder boy, uh, being at 3, you could add a 4th one if you want to. And also we have the Crane Mental Vanilla, okay? So those are the cards that you have as Vanillas. And in the Grade 2 lineup, you have the 3 copies of uh, your Deadly Vanilla. That's a very important card because you could also search them out with Jelly Beans to your hand. So this deck is actually gives you a different approach to Turbo. Because you could Turbo 
and aggro at the same time. There are some few problems right here. You're turboing but you're not doing the best turbo. You're aggroing but you're also not doing the best aggro. So you're kind of going between this turbo deck and the aggro deck. You're going between aggro and turbo and you create a vanilla turbo deck which could do both. So what are the good things about Zazan? Why is he in here and what does he mean for the deck? Well pretty much if you have activated the skill once, which as you know as a spike level player, you get GB1, GB3, GB5, GB7. That's that's the way we reach the GB8, right? Zazan could give you GB1. And why is that GB1 very effective? Because GB2 does nothing for the deck, pretty much still means 3 G yards. But if you get GB1, that would mean that on the first attack that your opponent attacks you, your flip G guards are active right away. So if you go first and you have used the skill of Zazan once and you got GB1, then you pretty much could uh, go first right GB8 with only three heals in hand. That's very good, but again, you're sacrificing a lot because as you can see, your grade one lineup doesn't play tier and also it doesn't play a lot of Wonder Boys or Big Blow Ted, which means that you cannot reset your combos. If you end up having no spike monsters, no barrels left in the deck, then the deck becomes less effective. Yes, you could still attack for a higher number, you could still have some multi attacking, you could even activate Zazan during your GB8 turn to get more power and to call more, to draw more. Problem is, there are limits to that while you compare this deck to this one. This one has so many different uh, ways you could get your GB8, you could do another thing, but this deck pretty much says you need to rush your opponent to put them at least a 3 or 4 damage so they don't get a lot of um, shield value out of them getting triggers, right? So if your finger becomes very strong, this deck could not hit anymore because you cannot reset your barrels and you cannot reset your bouncers. And pretty much when you talk about the grade 3 lineup, let's talk about the deck a little bit. So 4 uh, copies of Bad and Dragger, understandable. The uh, four copies of Jelly Beans also understandable. Jelly Beans could search out your heals, but he could also search out your vanilla grade two. And then we talk about Wolf and the one uh, Bull Spike. The Bull Spike is important in this deck because you could go good end because you're already committing to the field because of your vanillas. So that's why the Bull Spike is still in here because you could still do the combo with Bull Spike and good end. Problem is you don't have instructors or analyzers to. Uh, make the combo go for the 6th, 7th and 8th attack, right? Because in this deck you could only go 1 Rayguard, 1 Rayguard, Fangard and then the 2 Rayguard. So that's 5 attacks instead of 8, which is the first deck could do 8 attacks. Again, wait to the combo uh, video to, to, to see how that would work in action. Um, and then we talk about the other great ones that we have in here. Of course you have Vanilla, so you have kind of more shield. But the vanilla boy has only 5k shield, so you're losing shield. Normally, you have more shield out of Wonder Boy and Big Blow Ted. You see me referring Wonder Boy, Vanilla Boy. Vanilla Boy is the one without skill, Wonder Boy is the one with skill. Fun thing about this deck is, is you could go from Wonder Boy to a Vanilla Boy, right? Because you could put Wonder Boy into your soul and then you could call the Vanilla Boy out. Something that's also very interesting. So. When I tested this deck, I ended up with having a lot of fun with it, but I didn't really feel that the deck needed the vanilla mechanic in it to be able to reach the GB8. You pretty much have the one or the other, um, but yeah, it doesn't really make the deck broken. Also, important fact is that uh, the vanilla mechanic doesn't really support the GB8 except into giving you that GB1 that you could go to flip your G guards faster. But except that, it doesn't really give you GB5 right away and something like that. So it does do something for a deck, but still your opponent could still play around it. If they don't attack you, if they don't give you the opportunity to a G guard, then this deck will not reach GB8 by just having the vanilla mechanic in there. But what will happen is you will be falling into a situation where you will have to rush your opponent, but they will kill you back when they have the chance to, because you cannot rely on not giving your opponent any damage. You cannot rely on giving zero damage. Well, this deck could, 
this deck could just zero damage the opponent and could kill them right away. So that's the strong points and the weak points about this deck. This deck does actually give you a very refreshing way to um, to play the, the the turbo deck, like you could turbo and aggro at the same time. So I have toyed a lot with this deck and actually after testing for a very long time, before all the hate on Zala, um, I've tested a lot and then I ended up with having this build. This build is the build that worked the best for me and the grade 3 lineup is still the same, the grade 2 lineup, I took out the Burl and I add in more Wonder Void because I felt like focusing on Burl or uh, Spike Bouncer is good and because Spike Bouncer could get you the Zazan, could get you the Monday Boy, could get you the right combo pieces to the field, it felt better to play the Spike Bouncer. Also, the Spike Bouncer act around you having Counter Blast and if we are going into a rush format then why not, right? So then you have the Grade 2 lineup being other vanilla Grade 2. So you only have your Spike Bouncer as the main Grade 2, the other Grade 2s are just there to support the vanilla mechanic. For the grade 1, you only play the 4 copies of the, um, I think the light element was his name, I don't remember exactly, but the 15, 15k shield uh, vanilla boy. So the 15k shield is there just to support against the vanilla mechanic, but at the same time he's good shield value. Well in the other deck you had vanilla boy, the old wonder boy, which he didn't really have that much shield, so why play him? Because we don't have any other vanilla grade 1 to play. Then we have the three copies of Zazan. Again, this deck doesn't really have to rely on Zazan to win or to get that GP. But if you get him off, that's good. If not, sure, it's no problem. Then we have the three tiers. Again, tier is important. While we took him out in the last deck, I ended up adding the tier back to the deck because I felt that he was necessary. And then we play the three Wonder Boys to reset your Spike Bouncer when needed. And you have, of course, the one Gunwolf to reset your Wonder Boys. Even with all of this, with having the new starter because you need the new Mega Trainer and the other build you also needed the new Mega Trainer. Why? Because you need that one soul for your new rain element for Zazan. If you don't have that one soul then the deck will, will, he will not work because he costs you one soul. So you have to give up one of your heal searchers to go back and play the, um, the new Mega Trainer. Also very important to add that in there. Alright, for the G-Zone, it pretty much is the same. So, let's now talk about what did 2020 do for Spike Brothers in the current builds. Actually, the card, that's, uh, the card that had the most effects on the decklist that I play right now is the Critical Trigger. The Critical Trigger, first of all, she's cute. Look at the art. When you combine her or put her beside the, uh, the Heal Trigger, they look very cute together. Look at that. Look at how cute they are. <laughs> but uh, pretty much that critical trigger gave us uh, more cards to play in our Great 1 lineup because the Great 1s for Spike Buzz really do a lot. And I'm very happy with that because now we have more space to play whatever we want and we could take out the Stride Holders, which were already not really needed because you could not search out a Rising because you don't play Rising anymore. And um, that actually ended up with giving me this deck build. And this deck build is so heavenly good. It's actually, that's the reason why I ended up with getting more SP Gunwolf. So shout out to Fantura for getting me that. But uh, the deck actually works very well. And you have everything in there that you need. You have, uh, the deck is very flexible. Well, when you talk about this deck or even the final build, which is the Vanilla Turbo, it still lacks a lot and you are falling kind of in between. So for me when it comes to Spike Brothers, as I said, the card that has the most uh, effects on the decks is actually the critical trigger that you could stride with. That's when it comes to the Turbo Spike. When it comes to the, the let's say the Aggro Spike, then pretty much the new stride actually give you a very strong second stride and also it gives us the opportunity to play some older cards like Skydiver, like uh, the Limason, like um, whatever you like, like the Double Watch. Some of the older cards that we love to play so much are now back. So yeah, for me, I would say those are the cards that made the biggest issue or I think the, the most impact I mean. 
It's definitely not Zazan or the vanilla mechanic, although you could just put that in there, but I didn't feel with my testing that it made the deck better. It just gave it a different approach, gave it more of an aggro approach, gave the GB8 deck more of an aggro approach and also the uses of Force 2, so it's also nice, but it didn't do anything for the aggro build. You could play a vanilla aggro deck, but that deck is not as good as the deck that I just showed you. So what's my final conclusion right here? Well, pretty much my final conclusion is actually very simple. When you talk about Spike Brothers, you could not just add vanillas in there, although the deck would work, but you have to think about a real life rugby or American football team. And whenever you have a team, everybody in the team has a single or multiple purposes, right? And when you're having those vanillas, then you're kind of playing with one player less or you're having a dummy player in there, like just a dummy, just a sandbag in there. And that sandbag could still act as enough weight or it could act as still something that in the way for the opponent, but it does not act the same way as a player. So taking out the tier would mean you cannot counter charge anymore. Taking out the barrel, taking out the Wonder Boys, taking out the Ted would make the deck less effective whenever you get to the GB8 turn. Yes, you could still use Zazan to draw more and put more vanillas and create more power, but it's not as strong as what you're giving up. So if you want to play the vanilla mechanic, you need to think very hard about what you are sacrificing to achieving that. And if your sacrifice is too great, which is what I felt like, um, you don't really need to do that. So I am playing these decks and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So I advise you guys to also play them and have some fun with them and end up to having your own conclusion when it comes to this. But that's mine. Again, Thank you guys for watching, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I really put a lot of effort into testing these decks out and it really feels like so sad to put that so fast into one video. So I felt like, hey, why not to show you a deck profile on each deck and to go deeper into my thoughts about how to build the deck. And uh, yeah, I hope that you guys will enjoy this and that video as well. Again, if you are new to our channel, then you're welcome to like the video and of course to sub to our channel. Thanks for watching guys, until next time.